And we are freaking live, guys. Welcome back to another tactical podcast with Gutter Fighting Secrets. We are here today with the forklift operator at the forklift operator on Instagram. This guy is a Marsoc Marine, and he was telling me before we'll get into this, but he actually is, this is his first unit still. He's in, um, and I'm not going to get into specifics, but for those of you who don't know, uh, Marine Special Operations Command. Am I right, Forklift? Special Operations Command. Command, yeah. So um, this is a cool thing. Now, what Forklift Operator does is he's in logistics. And for any of you guys who don't know about like the difference between infantry and logistics and stuff, I'm not an expert myself. That's why we have Forklift here. But um, these guys are enabling the warfighters to do their job. The gun guys to go and shoot the bad guys. These guys help them. and you know, get the freaking machines fixed, bring in the ammunition pallets, all of this like stuff that really needs to be done in order for the guys to go and kick indoors or whatever. So forklift, bro, I appreciate you coming on. Um, thank you for agreeing to it. I know that we've gone kind of back and forth and said, Hey, you know, this and that there's some logistics. You, you didn't really want um, your identity out there just due to the fact of, you know, Mars Hawk, all of that stuff. So um, anyway, man, thanks for coming on. Welcome to the program. Thanks for having me on, brother. So I want to talk, and I just want to get into it here with you, man. Um, logistics driving the fight, dude. And I think that for a lot of guys and girls out there, as far as warriors go, we all want to be the one kicking in the door and carrying out the pretty girl, right? Like, that's just yeah. why a lot of people became whatever it is we are. But a lot of people also have to be okay with the fact that if you're not willing to support the fight, if you're not helping with logistics or whatever, then what are you really doing? Right. So, um, what is it, I mean, what is it about logistics that you love? I mean, you, you really have some great information here on the page. Um, and I can tell you that you really enjoy what you do. So what is it that made you decide to get into logistics and what is it about logistics that you really enjoy? All right, well, the confession time. When I uh, joined the Marine Corps, I originally wanted to be infantry. Uh, and uh, at the time, my recruiter told me that they didn't have any uh, 03 spots available for whatever reason. So they said, like, hey, you know, next best thing probably would be signing an engineering contract and you might get combat engineer. They do somewhat similar stuff in the infantry. I signed that contract and I ended up as a heavy equipment mechanic, 1341. So logistics is not what I wanted to be originally, but it's what I ended up in. And now I kind of got a weird passion for it uh, just because of the fact that, um, you know, I was talking to, I believe it was the Cognitive Raider, shout out to him, by the way, uh, a while ago about how, like, it's pretty cool that, like, hey, I got my small portion of the pie and, like, you know, like, I hope, hope you know, the, guy, the gunfighters do their job because they're not able to do their job without the ammo uh, without their generators, so on and so forth. And, uh, you know, it's a, it's a crucial part, uh, you know, to be in logistics because if uh, there's no logistics involved, the guys wouldn't be able to do what they need to do. And basically I'm giving them uh, – uh, the way I look at it is, like, I'm hoping them succeed, you know. My job may not be glamorous. It might not be cool, but I'm hoping them succeed their job in their mission. And that way, you know, it just comes full circle. I get, you know, uh, I feel great about the fact that I'm able to help the mission, maybe if I'm not the, even the one kicking down the door. So, uh, yeah, I kind of got, you know, like, as the more time I spent in the, uh, in logistics, the more appreciation I've gotten for it. Cause, uh, just cause the fact that, you know, like the guys get the mission done regardless. And, you know, like I help do my little part to do that. No, it really is a very important and underrated part of the whole operation. I mean, if you don't, you know, I spent some time in the Merchant Marine myself, and it's like not glamorous, right? It's not like Navy SEALs, right? But, you know, you're, you're nonetheless helping equipment and everything get over to where it needs to go. So we all have our part to play. Um, I love the post that you did about the um, the forklifts themselves. And they have like a, a different name, the Ram or something, the, uh, the Tram, right? The tram, yep, that's my baby girl. Yeah. I love the tram. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. Can you give I'm, us I'm a little heavy... bit more info about like what what is the tram? What makes it unique and special? All right. Well, all right. Oh man, I'm gonna nerd out the hell on you on this one, right? <laughs> so there's uh, my MOS is a heavy equipment mechanic. I call myself the forklift operator because I do my more 
operating on forklifts and you know heavy equipment than I do actually on maintenance just because in my shop uh, <coughs> excuse me anyways just because in my shop you know it's just like it's just basic preventive maintenance you know it's not like we're a full-on maintenance shop where we're like tearing apart engines um, and the tram is made by John Deere it's basically a civilian John, uh, like John Deere piece of equipment just painted olive drab for the Marine Corps um, and uh, that one in my opinion I would call it the workhorse in the Marine Corps when it comes to heavy equipment uh, just because it's a pretty versatile piece of equipment you can attach forks on it and you can attach a bucket on it and um, it's just a good piece of reliable gear so I, I have no complaints about that the only really downside to to that uh, piece of equipment is the fact that the boom doesn't extend in and out and I've been made mm -hmm. I want to make a post on another piece of heavy equipment in the Marine Corps that actually does that um, but it's a very good piece of equipment that's very reliable that's why I really like it and um, it's just a good piece of gear you know you can't, you can't complain when you have a piece of machinery that runs reliably so, no not at all and yeah. I really think that it's like anything else like what you do is very specific and guys tend to get really into whatever it is they do like you're driving around one of these things all day working on it for you to be able to sit here and talk to us about it is a mark of a professional and that brings me into another one of your posts that I actually was reading recently and that was the uh, version MT operator and the Chad MT operator and it really just goes oh, yeah. to show the difference between you know someone who's new at whatever it is they're doing and then someone who's more seasoned and um, the way that you put these posts together if it's done in a funny way to like make someone laugh, but it also, there's a lot of wisdom in the post that you put out, um, especially about, you know, look, whenever you get involved and really put your heart into becoming good at whatever the fuck it is that you're doing, that's the mark of a warrior. You know, you could sit back yeah. and say, I'm going to be okay at my job, but no, you're the guy who's saying, I may have not have even wanted to be, you know, in this uh, MOS or whatever, but I'm going to make it and do the very best that I can every minute a minute. Yeah, no, I'd have to agree. It's just that, you know, like, um, you know, I'm not like, obviously within the Marine Corps, you know, we shit on each other's MOS is like, oh, you're a fucking pogue or like, oh, you know, like you're um, like, I'm a grunt, you know, or like, hey, at least I'm not as pogue as that guy. But at the end of the day, what really matters and like what I consider a professional Marine is based off two things. Um, it's like MOS, comp uh, like the MOS proficiency. So like, how good are you at your job? You know, like how motivated are you to do it? How good, like motivated are you to learn? Um, you know, so I've met a lot of dudes that have just, you know, been in the MOS and then they just like are just there. Yeah. They don't bother really trying to like strive to learn more. They don't bother really trying to get out of their comfort zone. They're just there. Um, but like when you see guys that are really motivated what they do, even if they were given a shit deal of cards, which, you know, like every Marine could say that like, oh yeah, I was given the shit deal cards, fuck this place, you know, like, uh, fuck the Marine Corps. But you know, it's just like, you got, it's what you make out of it. And you know, the, when you run into dudes, uh, and I met plenty of them that are like good at what they do. And like, they let, they, uh, maybe not necessarily hundred percent enjoy it, but they put out in it cause they know that's their job and people rely on them to do their job. It's a really cool thing to see. And like, those are the guys that you want to work with. Cause you know, like you guys, like, um, you you just can accomplish the mission a lot more efficiently together with those guys and then two you know like another thing that uh marks you know professional uh, marines in my opinion is the fact that like they got that war fighting mindset you know they're like hey you know like you know in my case you know it's just like hey i'm just you know a heavy equipment mechanic you know and i operate a bunch of forklifts but like i got a job due to fulfill like the the mission which is to win the war at the end of the day or win the battle um so the, and like you know the, like that comes down to like being able to know basic combat skills you know um just because you know like if you don't know basic combat skills how are you supposed to defend yourself in combat or contribute to the fight because there may be a moment like for example for me where you know like i don't like operating a forklift is not the essential thing right now it's like shooting that guy you know um unless like my mos like is like in that moment my mos is like hey you need to like operate this forklift and get this out of the way, you know, for us to, you know, complete the mission. Then like at that point, it's more important that, you know, if we're getting round shot at us that I can shoot back and, you know, you know, have basic combat skills to win the fight and hopefully come home and survive. That's what I love about you Marines, man, is you guys are fucking like, you're all crazy. Number one, and you're all 
very competent warriors. I don't care if you're a combat MOS or a Pogue or whatever it is. Like you guys are all very competent at what you do. And I think there's for, for a guy who's never been in the Marine Corps, I think that there's probably just something about the way that they train you guys and brainwash you guys and drill you guys that makes you all very incredible, um, competent warriors. And, I want to get into the Marshawk thing, man. So how did you, how did you get into Marshawk? How did you land that? Um, can you tell us a little bit more about what Marshawk is as well? All right. Uh, yeah. So the way I ended up in Marshawk literally was, um, so it was, uh, after the schoolhouse. So, you know, you got boot camp. obviously you, uh, if you're not infantrymen, you go, you go to Marine combat training, which is like a month long of just like, Hey, teaching you how to be a rifleman. Cause you know, there's obviously that big Marine Corps saying of every Marine rifleman, and then after that, you go to your schoolhouse. So, like, what your MOS is going to be. I went to Fort Leonard Wood, uh, where the, it's uh, the biggest Marine Corps detachment, um, the yeah, biggest Marine Corps detachments there. And all the branches are there. There's a bunch of military that's at Fort Leonard Wood. I received my MOS training there. And about a week before I graduated, uh, we got our orders. And my orders just happened to say MARSOC on them. And so it was just a luck of the draw, essentially, for me in my case, that I ended up at MARSOC. And uh, MARSOC obviously falls under SOCOM. It's special operations. Just want to clarify, I'm not, you know, high speed, low drag, you know, Gucci tactical guy. No, I'm just like a logistics guy that's here in MARSOC just to help the actual gunfighters, the Raiders do their job. Um, you know, because there's like, uh, you know, just people you know, throw out the label MARSOC. They're like, oh, you're MARSOC. You're high speed, low drag, huh? No, I'm just, you know, a regular dude that's just here to do my job. Uh, you know, and that's just to enable the actual gunfighters, which are the Raiders, to do their mission and complete them. Now, um, when you and, say that you are part of MARSOC and you, you clarify that you're a logistics guy, which I get, but you did actually go through SEER training. I mean, you, you I would assume, would have been through a little bit more extra training than your, your typical Marine to be detached with SOG, right? Or, uh, sorry, MARSOC. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so I've like, since I've been here, it's typically the norm to, uh, depending on what battalion you're with or whatever, or if you're like, have the possibility to, to deploy, to get, receive some additional training. I've been very fortunate in my case, uh, to be able to do some additional training. I've gone, been able to go through SEER. I've been able to go through MD lock, which stands for uh, multidiscipline logistics operators course, um, which is basically, it's just a course for logistical enablers, you know, uh, just to learn more and be able to like get more of a uh, SOCOM side of logistics and, um, and like learn more towards that and be able to cater more towards that. Uh, and then I've gone through a couple additional, you know, little training things like, hey, go to the, the college nearby and like learn how to do interior wiring and plumbing and stuff like that. And, you know, it's a couple shoot packages. Um, you know, recently I finished, you know, learning how to uh, uh, set, like operate this thing called the crows, which is basically a remote control turret. Um, yeah, so that was pretty cool. I really like that. Um, but uh, since I've been here, yeah, I've been able to, I've been very fortunate with the training opportunities I've been given and I've taken full advantage of them and I'm always asking for more uh, when it comes towards that. Uh, yeah, a lot, a lot of the opportunities I've been given, I would not be able to have received in the regular Marine Corps. Um, so I'm really glad about that. And I do think that, you know, uh, at least logistics personnel that do come to Marsoc and they do deploy, they are a higher tier individual yep. than, um, some of the dudes that would be in the fleet. No, just cause of the fact that we're given more opportunities to train in that, at that, in that aspect. Well, there's gotta be something to it, man. I mean, the, the dedication that you have to your particular profession is, is really admirable. And I want to circle back to MD lock, but uh, before we get there, what can you tell us? I know that there's a lot that you can't tell us about SEER training, but what can you tell us about it? It's uh, I mean, when I when I went through, it was just a couple week long course. You know, um, SEER stands for Survival Escape uh, Resistance Evasion, and they literally break it down Barney style, like, hey, like these are like we're gonna give you tools to like succeed in these areas, um, like you know, so that way you know, you can, you know, come back home alive, you know, essentially as like best case scenario, or at least, you know, if you die, you know, and like, I mean, that's the, you know, more serious side of it. If you do, do die in captivity or whatever, you at least like did your very best to resist. And, you know, you like essentially fought them to like, to the very end, you know, like on the mental aspect of it and not giving them information. Um, 
uh, you know, survival portion, obviously, you know, like you go out to the woods and stuff and they give you a baseline of like, Hey guys, you know, like these are some tips and tricks, you know, like, Hey, make sure you purify your water. Here's how to start a fire. You know, here are some considerations depending on your environment. Um, escape, escape was pretty cool. Uh, like, I mean, that one's, I'm going to have to leave it pretty much at that. Uh, because like they teach you, you know, different ways to escape and everything, but I'm not, we weren't, I signed a contract saying I can't really talk too much about that. Um, but basically they teach you, they give you various tools to learn how to escape, you know, um, resistance, basically resistance just falls into the, the, like, Hey, a guy's interrogating me and he's trying to get information out of me or whatever. I'm going to like, here's like the tools you need to, you know, resist, you know, there's, uh, there's different little tactics they teach you on that. Um, you know, which basically just makes you just try to be as resilient as possible to giving up the information that they want from you. And then, uh, evasion which is basically like hey you know uh these guys are chasing us we gotta go full tilt boogie um in that aspect literally though it's like you know they give you like you know they teach you some tips and tricks but it's literally just like get away from them as fast as possible and don't get caught you know it, i mean it, it's it's pretty bare bones but um like i said i signed a contract i'm not really allowed to go too much into what uh they taught us just because i'm not trying to get my pp slapped um uh, but it's, it's very good training. Um, it was one of my favorite courses that I went through. Uh, it's, uh, it does challenge. I think it definitely does challenge each person that goes through it. It's not impossible by any means, but it's definitely a very good course to go through. And then, you know, guys that, you know, you, that if you met a dude that's gone through Seer, you're like, okay, I like, like you, there's just that little kind of bonding thing. That's just like, all right, I know this guy's got, you know, is a little tougher than the individual because there's some guys that dropped their pack in that course, you know, and they gave up, which was like, just like, come on, dude, like, really, you know, it's just like, you know, like you, you did that. And so now, I mean, I don't like to judge people, but whenever I run into individuals I met that went through that course and they dropped their pack, you know, I just don't have that as much trust and confidence in them uh, in that regards. But it was a very good course. I really enjoyed that one. Um, and it was one of the best training opportunities I've ever received. That's pretty cool, man. Those are some great skills, not only for the military, but for life in general. And, uh, yeah. you know, I can imagine, <clears throat> I can imagine the confidence boost that it was after you were able to walk away from it, uh, completing it successfully, <clears throat> because I know I've heard offline from different guys that there's some very challenging parts to that course. So, Oh yeah, no, it like it, each person gets challenged in that course for sure. And it, uh, it's, it's a, it's, it's more of a mental challenge than any, anything uh, in that course. Uh, there's definitely some points where like, it's very physical, um, you know, where you're just going for it. But as long as you're like, you know, just mentally or just like, no, I'm not going to be a bitch essentially. And just keep on pushing. You're going to, you're going to make it through the course. Um, and it was, it was a very good time. It, it like, uh, the common thing to say, it was like the funnest course I'd never want to do again. You yeah, know, a lot of yeah. guys say that all the time. It was, it was, it was fun. I lost a lot of weight. Uh, I lost 15 pounds during that course, uh, in the course of like one week. Um, so yeah, it was, it was a good time. I enjoyed it a lot. Um, and then like at the end of it, you know, uh, because, uh, they, they, uh, in the course, they talk a lot about these guys, a lot, especially Vietnam. They talk about Vietnam POWs quite often in, uh, in that course, at least in my section. And, you know, you, you know, become a raging patriotic all over again. Uh, <laughs> it just, cause like, it's just, it's super motivating to hear these stories about these guys that like, Hey, they were put in a very shit situation yet. Like they still like, you know, held on out, you know, being yeah. like a real American and they, they were like, you know, fought the good fight. And a lot of those dudes didn't get to make it home, but other dudes did. And it's just, yeah, it's, it's definitely very, you know, more like it's a very good course to go through and it, it it's something that i'm very happy that i was i was able to do it's one of those things where you never know <clears throat> you know even after you get out of the military one day and i know you probably want to stay in for a little bit longer but um you just never know when something like that come useful you know the russians come over the gosh damn border or whatever <laughs> right so. yeah red dawn situation yeah yeah, we may see it sooner than we think. Um, MD lock, man. So this is this is a fascinating thing. Can we can we go a little bit more in depth as far as what you're experiencing or what you had experienced um, when you went through MD lock with the uh, the um, special forces guys there? Yeah. So uh, MD lock stands for multidiscipline uh, logistics operators course, 
and basically it's uh it's a course for logistics dudes and there's like you'll get a wide variety of uh guys that come around you'll get um embarkation dudes you'll get maintainers um you'll get guys that are like ammo uh they'll all go through this course and the way it's broken down at least when i went through it's been about uh two years since i uh since i graduated the course um but so when i went through um it was broken down into like hey the first couple of weeks we're going to go over like hey this is socom especially establish a baseline of like what socom is like what where, where we come into play um and then from there you break off into your respective sections I, i'm a maintainer so i went to the maintenance section and uh the guy that was teaching us um he was a civilian dude he was a retired master guns he'd been there done that super salty fought in vietnam just uh, one of the most intelligent guys i've ever met in my life like just he knew every like he, it's almost hard to believe but he literally knew everything <laughs> but uh um so he taught us basically like you know when he was teaching us the maintainers section he was like hey um like i'm just gonna teach you guys how to get a vehicle home you know like let's say you know like we're going out um you know like let's say your bunch of vicks are rolling out and one of them takes an id blast or whatever like let's just get that vehicle kit like if, it, if it's still running let's get it so that way you can come back home like fix mm. it like do field repairs on it um and you know get it back home uh so it, it went a lot into that and it was um it was a very good course uh at least the section i went through for maintainer uh maintainers uh, we went into theory of operations and then like actual practical application and uh when i was going through he would take all these vehicles that were already broken because uh, he was right. It was all done in the motor transport bay. So there's plenty of broken vehicles already there. Uh, or he would, you know, set up these uh, purposely break these things, not permanently, just like temporarily that would be easy fix for us to go through, um, take what we learn and apply it to uh, apply it to actually fixing a piece of gear, mm. um, which was really cool. Um, and uh, whenever you fix something, it felt very rewarding. Sorry, I got notification. Um, it was very rewarding. And then after that uh, portion, uh, we went into like getting licensed. Um, so they gave us a couple heavy equipment licenses. Uh, that's where I officially got my tram license and then a couple pieces of HE. Uh, but I was already operating HE before that just because, you know, missions got to be completed. So my company didn't really care. Uh, so I, I, I learned beforehand how to operate HE. Um, and then from there, there we learned uh, a little bit about um, uh, construction and then like, interior wiring. So, you know, just basically, hey, I got this pad, like, they need the outlets in this room, you know, like, how do I do that? So it was a very good course. Um, it was about a month and a half long, I want to say, uh, but it was a very cool course. There's the other sections learned about their respective trades. Um, I can't talk to more on them just because I didn't go through that section. Uh, but the embarkers, they learn more about embarkation stuff the weapons guys they learn more about weapons and the ammo guys learn more about ammo um you know like it, you know, how to do that but my section uh was a very good section uh to go through and that has a lot to do with the instructors that they placed in there they uh were really motivated to teach us and they were really intelligent they were very experienced and they applied their experiences and like you know to uh, like they use their experiences to teach us um and they a lot, all those instructors had that war fighting mindset, you know? Uh, right. So they're like, Hey, you know, this is what's got to get to be done to get the mission accomplished. And so it was a very good course. That was uh, one of my favorite courses I went through because I, I learned a lot and I took away from a lot from that. We talk a lot about prepping on this channel and I would suppose that as far as someone for a prepping group, you know, you talk about who would you want? What kind of per person would you want? You, guy like you, man, would be like the ideal candidate for any small unit, for any group. You know, I mean, you, a guy who's been specifically trained on, if our vehicle gets shot to shit, how do I make fuel repairs to get it back home? You know, how do I freaking, you know, repair this generator over here? Like, those are some incredibly valuable skill sets when it comes to just a, a sustainable combat mindset. Yeah, no, and uh, the thing that's cool about that, that you mentioned that, is a lot of times, at least for the logistics dudes, um, within Marsoc, when they get, you know, sent out and they get deployed with the Raiders, um, sometimes it's only one guy that's literally like one logistics dude that's the logistics rep for a team. So, like, yeah. he may be a, uh, for example, I got a couple buddies who are electricians and they were literally 
the like only log rep. They weren't a mechanic. They weren't, you know, an embarker or anything. But for that team, they were the only log rep. So they had to like, you know, hope that they, they at the end of the day had to get the mission accomplished for them. Because uh, the guys would look over at them and be like, hey, you're a log guy, right? You know how to do this. And then they'd like, even if they didn't, they'd figure out a way to do it just because uh-huh. uh, that's what was required of them. Um, and so that's why I'm really big on the mindset, you know, of like, hey, you can't be just a one trick pony. You got to have multiple skills. Um, and like, obviously, you can't have all the skills. That's just not feasible, mm-hmm. uh, especially within logistics. Logistics is so, uh, such a wide encompassing field uh, that there's just too much to know about it. But you can at least like hey, have like uh, enough knowledge to be able to get the guys support that they need. So yeah. uh, that's that's a, that's a bit like a big message I try pushing out. Um, that's why there's a variety of logistics stuff I push out on my uh, Instagram, um, just so that way like guys aren't a one trick pony, you know. So yeah, yeah. And I'm looking at your Instagram now, man. I'm looking at the you've got a post on the uh, MTVR. The uh, what is this? The it looks like a big ass freaking uh, armored yeah. truck with a big turret on top. Yeah, it's the it's the we we the nickname for it is the seven ton. We call it the seven ton, um, and so uh, you know for transporting you know uh, for transporting stuff that's literally like I said the you know workforce in the Marine Corps for that one. Uh, it, it's uh, you'll see them rolling all around main side uh, Camp Lejeune and just all over the Marine Corps. Um, it's a if you maintain it properly and you know how to properly employ it, it's a very good piece of gear uh, to have. And, uh, you know, like I, I talked about that one just cause I'm licensed in it. I've driven it enough times to be like, Hey, I can, you know, maybe I'm not as knowledgeable as like an actual motor T operator. Who's like job, sole purpose in life is to operate this vehicle, right. but I know enough to be able to talk about it. And I've like seen it used and employed uh, multiple times, uh, out in field conditions. Um, so yeah. For those of you guys just sitting there at home, um, I may or may not get the opportunity to put a couple pictures on here, but I would highly recommend all of you guys, um, if you're listening to this, if you're watching this, go and check out on Instagram, the forklift operator, the forklift operator, and you'll see all these pictures. And um, bro, you, you took most of these, I think, like yourself probably, right? Uh, so, some of them are mine. Some of them are just ones I had to pull off Google. Uh, so it's like, it's a mix. You know, some yeah. of those photos are my personal photos. Some of them are just ones I pulled off Google. And it's just like, hey, there's a guy like here's a you know f- a photo of a seven ton actually being employed in a war zone, and I, I tend to like those photos just because it kind of reiterates the fact of the war my- fighting mindset, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I like to use those photos of like them being used in combat scenarios. Um, so yeah, but it, it's I, a mix. I highly recommend you guys go ahead and check out the Instagram page. And um, speaking about war fighting. You said before we went live here, man, that you're actually getting ready to do your first combat deployment, if I'm correct. Yeah, uh, uh, I will be doing my first one, uh, so I'm pretty stoked about that. Uh, can you, you tell know, us got, where around geo- ge- geographically, like where you're going to be going, or? I can't. Yeah. I'm sorry. I, 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 I wish I could, but I just can't. So, uh, you know, those uh, damn commies might be spying on us. So, yeah. 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 Well, so, uh, uh, but, but um, fuck them anyway, man. I'm I'm glad that you won't um give away anything you're not supposed to, because that's the most important thing here on the podcast is everything integrity, accountability, right? So, but um, that's really awesome. I'm really happy for you. I think that I mean, hopefully you be somewhere where you're not in too much of a harm's way. But either way, it sounds to me like you're a marine, you're a warfighter. You want to go on the front lines and experience um what it's really like. Yeah, no, I've, I always have, um, you know, ever since I was a little kid, you know, I was always watching the war movies, I was reading the history books and everything, and, uh, you know, it's just, well, I guess part of that, you know, mindset of, like, being a man, like, wanting to prove yourself, essentially, yeah. and, uh, you know, to me, it's, uh, to me, my mindset is that, like, I don't have to prove anything to anyone, but I have to prove like, something to myself, uh, so, you know, that's kind of my mindset on it, and I'm really stoked about it. This is literally just you know what I've always wanted to do. So I'm um, I got a I'm not gonna lie I got mixed feeling uh, I got mixed emotions about it. I'm super stoked about it. Uh, I'm a little scared just because you know I got guys that are going out with me and I don't want them to get hurt. Um, you know uh, it's just yeah it's I'm pretty stoked about it though and I'm really excited to be able to uh, contribute in in just my little world and my little bubble that I'm able to control. Listen, you know it, it's. 
it's the type of thing that every warrior dreams of, to be honest, to go overseas and actually be in, be on deployment. Um, I know a lot of us never got the opportunity and it really, I think it always sticks with you somewhere in the back of your mind. Like I was trained to do this, but I never got to do it. And you are actually going to get to go and, you know, do something somewhere, which is going to be fucking awesome, man. Um, I yeah. know you said that you are in a leadership position, so to speak, and I don't want to give out your rank, just, just, you know, you can, but I'm not going to, but I know that you are in somewhat of a leadership position. So that's got to kind of stick in your mind saying, I've got guys I'm supposed to be looking out for in some respect. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, I got, you know, obviously Marines are lower ranking than me and, you know, like my, my little, my literal biggest fear right now is that, you know, I fail them and they don't get to come home at the end of the day. Uh, just cause you know, like me, you know, personally, like, I don't want to die, but I made my peace with death. That's just part of life, you know. That's you know essentially conflict. That's war, um, and I, I'd like to come home and you know come back to my family and everything. Uh, but it's just at the end of the day, like I got the responsibility of make sure my guys come home, and I would I would rather be the one to get taken out than them, uh, you know. And so if you know I go, th- uh, yeah, if if I went through without a scratch, but you know, one of my Marines got taken out, uh, that'd be really rough for me to deal with. Uh, I wouldn't lie about that because you know it's just that that's you know, you know, so some you know father mother is entrusting me like to take care of their son or daughter, and if I like am the, if they don't come home, it's just like I failed them. You know, uh, that's how I look at it. Um, and obviously, there's going to be things that are out of my hands, you know. But it's just like it's just the fact that I was given that responsibility, making sure they you come back home alive. Um, you that's know, the so. that's the real curse of being a leader. I think is that you know that you these these guys and girls, their life is in your hands in many respects, um, and the decisions that you make directly affect them directly, which makes it worse because it's. One thing to be, you know, following orders and doing your thing and told what to do and where to go and when to do it. But to be the one giving the orders, it's a whole nother level of responsibility. Yeah, especially if, like, they have to pay for your mistake, you know. It's just like, uh, yeah, it's it's not a fun thing to think about. But obviously, like, I I would consider myself to be a realist, you know. Uh, It's just that, like, I look at the world how it is. You know, it's ugly. It's not beautiful. Um, It is beautiful, but it isn't at the same time. Uh, and it's just, you know, that's just one of the things about, especially about human aid, like war, um, is just that, you know, people don't make it home. That's just a fact. So it's just, uh, you, I got, I, I just, you know, at the end of the day, hopefully I'm able to control everything within my sphere that's possible. And, you know, best case scenario, everyone comes back home alive. Well, you know, forklift, it's, uh, it's one of those things where I can always tell a good leader because a good leader will lose sleep over this. Whereas I've known officers who they don't think about it. It doesn't really cross their mind and they don't really care that much. And it, yeah, that's not the type of guy you want to be serving under. It's, it's you that you want to be the guy that really cares. The guy that's saying, fuck like, what if this, what if that, whereas the other guys like, Oh, whatever, like we'll be fine. That's, that's not a good look. Yeah, no, it's just, uh, you know, like, you know, biggest, like, thing you can do honestly is just try uh to prepare your own dudes as much as possible uh you know for hopefully you don't have to deal with it but for the worst case scenario it's just uh, if you don't prepare you guys and you don't train them and at times you know you may be so busy that it's like really hard to but you just gotta set the time aside to do it anyways even if like that means it's on your own personal time and you might be forcing those guys to be spending their own personal time to do a like extra 20 minutes of training you know uh, simple things, you know, like even the little simple things are just like, Hey, how do you put on a tourniquet properly? Like, Hey, when you like, you're putting a tourniquet on yourself, you want to pull towards your heart, you know, stuff mm-hmm. like that. Or explaining, you know, difference between deflate and inflate to them, you know, still like small things that just take like 15, 20 minutes to do, um, out of your own personal time, uh, that, that does matter. And so if like, there's any other guys in the military watching this, you know, um, especially NCOs. Uh, make sure you take the time out of your day to train your guys, even if it's just quick 15 minutes or even like plan for bigger events to do, um, you know, it's uh, bigger training events and push for it. It's really down to the NCOs at the end of the day, make sure that their guys are prepared uh, for combat. You know, I never really got why somebody wanted to be in a military leadership position. Um, it takes so much more personal time than anything else. And I'm just like, 
I don't have a lot of training, but, you know, I have some small unit tactics and it, the guys in leadership positions, they were constantly, it was a leader recon, leaders recon or then figuring out stuff and building a small little map with sticks. Like all of that stuff takes your personal time and just brain power, right? Whereas the guys, the boots, right? They just, they sit there, they watch a sector, whatever. But yeah. the leadership guys, they never fucking stop working. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, I was a platoon sergeant for a little while, and uh, yeah, I definitely got shafted out of a lot of my own personal time. Yeah. Uh, you know, cases like, oh, hey, you know, one of my Marines is like not feeling good, and he needs to go to the emergency room. Oh, yep, that's me. I'm taking him. I'm taking him <laughs> to the emergency room now at like three o'clock in the morning. You know, or it's just like maybe I'm done with all my work. You know. But one of my Marines is not yet, you know, just because, like, um, you know, maybe he's in the MOS that I'm not, like, I can't help him out in, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and so I can't, like, help him out just because I'm not that MOS and I don't really know what I'm doing. So then I just literally sit there and wait for them to get done before I even go home, you know. Uh, so yeah, it's just, you know, like, it, it definitely sucks a lot of your personal time out of the day if you do take your leadership role very seriously. And, uh, like my aspect, like my view on it is that like, you know, like those are my guys. I owe it to them. I signed the contract. I was given this rank. I got to live up to the reputation of this rank, you know, and I got to make sure that these guys get taken care of. Uh, so, you know, I signed the contract. So it's part of the job. At the end of the day, forklift, it's only going to make you better. It's, it's only going to make you better, man. And yeah, I like to guys, that. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. And you guys who do this, um, professionally are, like I said earlier, uh, the Marines, uh, you guys are the best. Like the, the, the hardest warriors, the most cutthroat type of guys, Marines. Every time I meet a Marine, it's the same type of deal. Just I know they're good to go. Um, so, and again, we're talking about giving up your own personal time. And that's what you're doing here with the Forklift Operator account on Instagram is you're literally like giving up your time. You're making these posts. And I know how it goes to like sit there think of an idea, make a post, like try to make it. So it's like understandable, but also like you can get your point across. It takes time. So that's really cool that you are taking things, you know, not only this seriously, but this professionally to help people out on the job and during your own free time. Yeah. Yeah. No, I was like, honestly, you know, like just with my Instagram page, like if I help out one guy, you know, learn something like, that's just what I want. I want people to learn, you know, um, and I want people to like, you know, we'll have like those uh, tools in the toolbox to be able to apply them if they need them. Um, you know, that's kind of the purpose why I started this page. Plus I was a little bored. Uh, so I want to be a little more productive with my own time. And then I was just like, Hey, I know some logistics nerd shit. So let's talk. I'm just going to talk about that, you know? Uh, so yeah. Uh, you know, I'm just, uh, yeah, as long as someone's learning from like you know some like something that I know, I'm always willing to share that knowledge. So, as long as it's not you know you know communist or anything like that. So, <laughs> don't ever tell a communist anything. You can't tell them anything. They yeah yeah you can't. They know what to <laughs> so um yeah, I mean what you're doing is really cool. Like I love looking at your page. I don't know shit about logistics, but I always figure from my own personal thing like hey, it doesn't hurt to learn a little bit something about like what you don't know, you know? Um, exactly. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, exactly. What, um, is there anything else that you want to kind of like dive into here? I mean, anything that you would want to get across to younger guys out there who are thinking about joining the core or guys maybe who are in and looking for, uh, you know, some motivation, something like that. Okay. Yeah. Um, my biggest thing. And one thing I see all the time is that like dudes, they get, um, like you, you said, like, like need the motivation. Um, it's just that, you know, I see a lot of dudes that sign the contract and then they want to be in that mindset of just like, Oh, I got fucked, you know, by the Marine Corps. Um, which like in some cases, like, yes, yeah, some dudes get shafted, but that's very rare when a dude just gets genuinely, you know, screwed over by the Marine Corps mm -hmm. and it's all about mindset. And, um, one thing I hate seeing and what really annoys me is when dudes, uh, there's a term we use, drop their pack, you know, it's basically just like, oh, like, screw this. I'm done with this stuff. I'm just going to, you know, just coast along doing my thing, you know. Um, it's just, you know, at the end of the day, you sign the contract, you know. Uh, if you read all the fine print, it tells you everything you like, everything you need to know. Uh, like, hey, I signed four years, you know, to like, you know, serve my country or whatever. 
And uh, since you signed that contract, and, you know, you raise your right hand to swear an oath, you know, to defend the Constitution and the nation and everything. Um, you know, you got to give it your all at that point. And so um, it's just like to those guys out there that are just like a little unmotivated, just, you know, think bigger picture. You know, you at the end of the day, uh, whether male or female, you were an adult when you signed that contract. Um, so just like, you know, act like an adult, you know, uh, and do your job. So there's that. And then, uh, you know, really one thing I want to hit home is just uh, don't for like, no matter how pogue you are like me, you know, I'm pretty pogue, but uh, it's just that like at the end of the day, um, you're still a service member, whatever branch you are, and you're here to win the nation's battles, you know? Um, so it, it doesn't like you got your own part and it may not seem important, but it's very important to the you know whole machine. Uh, Cause like, you know, let's say you're admin guy guess what grunts don't get paid if you don't do your job you know uh and then it's just like i don't get paid if i don't do my job and it's just and then it's just like grunts don't get their ammo if the, they if the ammo tech guys aren't doing their job mm -hmm. pulling out the ammo and then if a forklift guy loads it onto the truck and then that truck the the truck driver takes that truck and then he starts driving out there uh to drop it off and then make sure then the eod guy clearing out the fields to make sure that um, the truck driver doesn't get hit by uh, IEDs, you know. We all have our own little part that we play in, and don't let anyone, like, down, like talk down on you on it. Like, on a serious note, obviously, people joke around about it, but, like, your job is very important, and try being the, the master at it, uh, at your own job because it just makes us that much more lethal and much more effective when it comes down to, you know, fighting and killing bad dudes. I love the way you think about it, man. Be lethal. And do that by whatever it, the fuck it is you do, do it well. Yeah. Well said, man. Um, yeah. Thanks again for coming on, bro. It's been a gosh right. damn pleasure. Yeah, no, thanks for having me on. I uh, really appreciate the opportunity. So this was, this was great. Yeah, I, I, really, I was really nervous about this, but this turned out pretty well. I'm really glad that you allowed me to talk about logistics nerd shit. Nah, man. I mean, for real, like we, we don't talk about this stuff enough and it really is important. Um, it, knowing every single aspect of the fight is what makes a warrior a warrior and what makes a warrior a good warrior. So thanks yeah. again for coming on, man. All right. Take care. Have a good night. You too, bro. And for the audience out there, please remember that you are your first and last line of defense. Check out the forklift operator on Instagram. And I will see you on the next Tactical Podcast.